So this this um, algor algor algorithm that you were just referring to. Um, so this is a, a, a temp company that was a, was it a started by you or? or yes. So so basically, the personalized nutrition project was an ambitious project which uh, was uh, headed uh, by me and my my uh, colleague Aaron Segal, who is a mathematician from uh, the Weizmann Institute of Science. We started with this project uh, back in 2012, and uh, um, this was uh, a study that uh, was first published in 2015 and formed the cornerstone of what we call personalized nutrition today. And in this study, we analyzed uh, the data from a thousand individuals in Israel that uh, kindly gave us a week of their life. And we measured uh, and collected an unprecedented amount of microbiome and host related data, uh, including a smartphone app that was used in this study um, and uh, a continuous glucose measurements that, that uh, generated very accurate measurements of, of uh, sugar responses to food uh, in, in, in uh, a week of follow up. And then uh, a very sophisticated machine learning and AI technologies were used to generate predictive algorithms for each individual that are able to accurately predict a person's sugar responses to any given food. And this eureka moment was the basis for personalized nutrition because it allowed us for the first time to formulate diets that are different between individuals, but would uh, hopefully lead to um, um, normalization of blood sugar levels. And this was tested by us in different contexts, including recently in a long-term uh, randomized human trial, uh, uh, which compared this data-driven personalized approach to the gold standard uh, American Diabetes Association recommended diet. And, and we've quite convincingly showed that this personalized science-driven approach was outperforming the current one-size-fits-all diet in a large group of pre-diabetic individuals, which are individuals already predisposed to develop uh, uh, disturbances leading to type 2 diabetes. Um, and this this uh, set of, of discoveries has, has uh, been uh, repeated by other groups across the world um, and is, is gaining track and, 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 and basically tells us that uh, data coming from the host, from the human host, and data coming from the microbiome could be combined using advanced technologies in order to predict and maybe to impact dietary interventions at different uh, clinical contexts. So, so this company, I know it's called Day Two, and mm -hmm. um, it, it does does a person have to um, wear a continuous glucose monitor, or like you know, there's a bunch of biomarkers that need to be done to 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 try this out with your yeah. So that's a great question, and 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 just just to make clear to our audience, um, all all the research that I've stated was academically done um, um, in an academic setting without any company involved. Uh, but following the publication, uh, um, the Weizmann Institute of Science have uh, licensed the technology to a spin-off company called Day Two, uh, which further developed it uh, for a massive use uh, and app scaling by, by many more individuals. What the advantage is of day two as a company is that now that they've performed over 100,000 uh, uh, um, tests on, on 100,000 people and more, uh, the, the quality of data that was collected is so great and, and the resolution is so great that no, the, the people that are now engaged no longer need to go through all the procedures that characterize the, the early studies and, and they don't even need to wear a continuous glucose monitor anymore. In other words, uh, a person can now provide a, um, a stool sample um, that can be shipped through the mail plus uh, um, um, some commonly uh, available clinical parameters that they can um, um, provide through the internet, and then um, an accurate prediction of that person's glycemic responses or sugar responses uh, uh, to foods and recommendations that are peculiar and specific for that person could be provided because of the background database that was already created. Um, now, I'm not part of the company. I'm, I'm, I'm the one of the two scientific founders of the company, uh, but the company is now uh, running on its own, uh, uh, mainly in the US, um, and is available uh, in the US. Um, and and um, the, the, the findings that uh, we discovered have been reproduced uh, by others uh, in other human studies uh, in the UK and in the US. There are um, other commercial entities that are developing the same approaches. Um, I can tell you that uh, in the book we, we published uh, called The Personalized Diet, um, in addition to our story, we also describe a kind of a do-it-yourself 
a non-commercial way to exploit these discoveries, for example, by buying a, a glucose uh, monitor that, that you, know, you can purchase in your um, local pharmacy, um, and, and by skin pricking yourself and measuring your blood sugar responses after some of the foods that you usually consume at your daily lives, you can now start to tweak your diet and to change ingredients in your, your diet in reducing your sugar responses uh, um, after meals. Um, so you can do it yourself in, in of course, much, much less sophisticated manner, uh, uh, but you can use the same principles that we've discovered in um, changing elements in your diet and making your sugar responses lower uh, um, than before. So it sounds like you're a proponent of, of people wearing a continuous glucose monitor. I've, I've worn one for the past, oh, almost three years. And um, I have learned an immense amount of very interesting information from, from wearing one. Um, probably one of the most surprising ones early on, um, I started wearing it when I was a, a new mother and was the effect of lack of sleep on how the way my body responded to the same foods that I've always eaten in, in terms of my postprandial glucose response. And it was completely out of control, uh, when I was, when my sleep was disrupted, you know, um, there are people that, that um, there, there are scientists and researchers out there and uh, physicians that do not like the continuous monitor, you know, glucose wearing approach um, because they they claim that it, you know, urges people to not eat a healthy fruit or something like that because it may elevate their blood glucose level. What do you think? Well, I, I uh, I'm not sure. I. I... I, I would like to propose that every person wears a continuous glucose monitor, but I respectfully disagree with those who say that, you know, measuring yourself or, or, or using science and technology uh, in order to improve, uh, um, um, you know, what you do in your daily lives would, would, would uh, you know, be wrong. I, I think that, you know, uh, disregarding uh, all the advances that science is proposing to us, um, and, and, and not utilizing these advances in, for our benefit uh, would probably make us miss a lot of the, of, of the good that science has to offer. Um, so so by, um, you know, by wearing uh, um, a continuous glucose monitor, uh, you probably experience many surprises. Uh, um, and, and maybe, you know, we've, we've done thousands of people, and I can tell you that almost in any person that we've measured, we found counterintuitive surprises. Some people uh, spike their blood sugar to the roof and they eat tomatoes. Now you combine tomatoes with uh, some white bread and, and the response goes down. So, so you know, by, by not doing the experiment or by not measuring themselves, they would uh, devoid themselves from the benefits of knowing what is good and what is less good for themselves. So, so I'm all for measurement. I'm all for knowing and, and for doing this rationally and carefully, but doing it.